following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Let there be a firmament. Following the sequence of lectures on the on the title Let Us Make Adam. Today we are entering into the mysteries of the second day in relation with that uh, title, the second day of Genesis. In order to comprehend uh, better the following, let us uh, remember the sacred prayer that Master Jesus of Nazareth show us in the New Testament. The Our Father. It says, uh, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive uh, those who trespassed against us. And uh, lead us not into temptation, but lead us, lead us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. That prayer is directly related with the first sephirah of the tree of life. That in the world of Aziluth, the world of splendors, archetypes, receives the name of Eheye Asher Eheye. That in the Bible is translated as I am what I am. But indeed, uh, esoterically speaking, it's translated as I become who becomes. It's translated as and God said let there be a firmament. <coughs> Esoterically speaking, it's translated as the Lord Yao Elohim become a firmament. In order to understand that. In the second graphic of uh, the series of graphics that we have here, we find the quotation of Sohar that it states, whatever in the scripture the word Yehi, which means becoming, 
both within the innermost of this world and the logos of the world of becoming. Zohar. Sometimes in the Zohar, this world, uh, Yehi or Ehe is transforms as the world to come. Which sometimes, if we take it as it is, we might think uh, that it is a world that will be coming in the future. In a certain day. But uh, really, Ehe refers to the world of Atziluth. That's why the Master Samael on the Or in the book of Peace of Sophia unveiled, he explains the Ancient of Days, which is Keter, is the first activity of manifestation and movement which is stated as a state of pure becoming. Then the Christ, the Logos, is Chokmah, the second Sephira, to the right of Keter, below. The second primordial, which is gleaming in the zodiacal belt. The zodiacal belt is always associated with the wall of Bria, creation. And the brazen serpent that bites its tail with his mouth which is Vina, the third primordial, emerges from the Logos. This is, of course, addressing the third Sephira in the left of Keter below, which is the Holy Spirit. These are the three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Logos, and the Holy Spirit, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which corresponds to the three witnesses on earth in Malkut, our physicality, the breath, which relates to the top of our body, the blood that refers to the heart, and the water that refers to the sexual uh, energy in Yesod. So there you have what, uh, in synthesis, is uh, related with the first uh, graphic that we have here, Eheye Asher Eheye, I become who becomes. So, Yehi is a modification of the verb in Hebrew of the word Eheye. So, whether you, we say Yehi or Eheye, we are addressing Keter, the divine light, which is the first manifestation of the ends of Or. When you see in the second graphic, uh, the tree of life, you find there uh, the three worlds related with the three triangles of the tree of life. The first is the world of Atziluth. The second is the world of Bria, and the third, <coughs> the world of Yetzirah. At the very bottom, of course, is Malkut, the earth, which is called Asia, with the word to make, that we're, means Asia. Sometimes it says that Asa, to make. That's why when in the previous lectures we were addressing the, uh, the verse let us make Adam into our image, into our likeness, is addressing the Sephira Malkut, because this let us make, it says Asa or Asia, means that we are addressing the physical world and how we in this physical world, we are going to make Adam in our own psychology. Because when we said our likeness, it refers to the world Bria. And when you said into our image, it's related to the world of Atziluth, where we find what in Hebrew is called Zalem, the image of God. 
So when we want to find the image of God within each one of us, we will say that image is placed in his head, which is the inner most, the inner spirit that we have within, that everybody has within. And that in previous lecture we explained his name in the Bible, Abraham. And in Hinduism it's called Brahma, the creator. And it's because this is the first sephirah that appears in the world of Bria, which means creation. So Hesed works under the commands of the Holy Spirit, Bina, in order to make the men together with the Divine Mother who resides in Malkut, which is called Aima Elohim, in order to make Adam. But this Adam will emerge from Malkut to Yesod, to Chod, to Netzah, to Tifereth, to Geburah. That is the Adam that the Bible is addressing when it says, let us make Adam. Because, in other words, the Divine Mother is addressing the superior force of Atiluth, saying, let us apply the forces of creation in order to make with the forces of Malkut, where all the forces of heaven or the superior dimensions gather. In other words, our own physicality, our own physical body, gathers all of the forces of Yetzirah, Bria, and Atziluth, which are called the nine heavens. So when we address heaven, we address Yetzirah, Bria, and Atziluth. The higher, of course, is Atziluth, which is the first manifested heaven where we find the pure light, which is called Yehi or Ehe Why? Because this means becoming. In other words, Keter is a state of pure becoming of light, which is from moment to moment emerging from the absolute which is called the Ein Sof Or, that light that comes from the Ein Sof, which is the unmanifested city. And from there is always a light emerging <coughs> and appearing in the universe. So when in the Sohar you find the words, the world to come, is referring to this state of becoming. It's not a world that will eventually in the future appear. But it's a world that is here and now eternally becoming. It's the light of the solar absolute that emerges from the seventh dimension and that is descending little by little and finally crystallizing in the third dimension, which is the world of Asia, and penetrating into our own physicality. That's why the physical body is indispensable, because in there resides the Divine Mother that can take advantage of that energy in order to make the man inside of us, inside of our psyche. This is not something physical, but psychological. And begins, of course, with what we explained in the previous lecture, taking advantage of that solar force that descends from above into our physicality. And the one that is doing that is Hesed, which is our own spirit, our own innermost. That's why you find there in the third graphic the image of Brahma, from Hinduism, seated on the Shushana, or the lotus flower, the lily of the water that uh, is named lotus in India. 
and that is uh, related with many symbols. So this Brahma is the same Abraham. And uh, when we address Hinduism in his images, remember that uh, in Hinduism, as well as in Buddhism, they uh, show their archetypes with human form in order to express that these archetypes are intelligent entities within each one of us. It is not that you will find a being with four faces, as many people think, that the Hindus think that uh, God has four faces. No. Those four faces of Brahma, as we explained in the previous lecture, are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which manifest through our own particular inner most, which is a fourth. So that's the simple union of four archetypes in one. So Brahma or Abraham takes the light from the world of Atziluth within each one of us. That's why when we read, and Elohim said, let there be light, and light was. Better said, let light become, and light became. To whom spoke Elohim the words, let there be light? Remember that this Elohim represents Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three in one. To whom he spoke these words? These words were spoken to the innermost. I mean, to our own particular spirit. The indweller of the earth. So, the earth is a physicality. And the one that indwells in us is the innermost the spirit. Yet... And light was refers to the light created in the world Bria from the world of becoming. That means that in the world of Bria, Brahma or Abraham takes the light of the, uh, the world of Atziluth in order to make the man in Malkut through the world of Bria, the world of creation which is under the command of the Divine Mother, Aima Elohim, Bina, the Holy Spirit. In other words, the man into the likeness, which appears in Bria, is going to be made according to the image. So the image is a blueprint, which our own inner spirit takes, in order to build with our Divine Mother here on the earth, the Adam into the likeness. And that is precisely what in Genesis states, let us make Adam into our likeness, into our image. And uh, the likeness, of course, are the same archetypes which are placed, deposited in our sexual glands. Because the archetypes are pure light in our own spirit. That's the image. If we want to say, where is the image of God in us? In my own spirit. But in potentiality. Not in activity. In order to make that image active, physically, internally in us, the Divine Mother, Aima Elohim, called Adonia, called also in the Sohar is called Deborah. If you find uh, in the book of Numbers about uh, uh, the mystery of that woman that took the Israelites into the right path, Deborah. The name Deborah Derives from Dabar, the word. In other words, the logos, the word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
is hidden within Deborah. That Deborah is inside of each one of us. It's the only one that can make Adam into his likeness, into her likeness, thanks to the Father which is above. And that are precisely the archetypes which are placed in our own sexual substance, in our own seed. The Bible talks about the seed of Abraham, the seed of Jacob, the seed of Isaac. This Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob represents the second triangle. Hesed, Geburah, and Tifereth. There is where we find that, those uh, uh, archetypes that descend into our physicality, Malkut, in our, um, in our own seed. Sperm and ovum. The sperm is what is called day. The ovum is what is called light in alchemy, in, in the Bible. Why? Because in the same way that the light of becoming emerges from the Ein Sof and appears in Keter, the father of all the lights, in the same way the sperm emerges from the physicality of the male and goes out through his sexual organ into the darkness, the womb of the female. She's a sexual organ. If you notice, the sexual organ of the male is outside, but the sexual organ of the female is inside. That is the way that is hidden day and darkness. That's why man is called day, because his sexual organs are shown. But the female organs, the creative sexual organs, uterus and ovaries, are inside her womb in darkness. There's no light there. But in that way is how the Holy Spirit creates life within the darkness. In the same way is how we take advantage of our own sexual energy from our own darkness, physicality. Because the light is hidden inside of us, physically speaking, but in combination with our spirit, he takes the image because the likeness of God is in our sperm and ovum. And during the sexual act, our own particular inner mosque has said, based on the blueprints, which are called archetypes of Israel, makes Adam inside of us into the likeness. So this is a long process. This is how you see it alchemically. That's why <coughs> the higher light, the light of the orb, this orb sometimes is written as I, because the same word ayin means I and also means orb. Relates, of course, to the world of becoming, because the orb or the I, in other words, the letter Yad is the first that appears, which is Keter. And that is what is referred to the light of the orb. As you see, our eyes are always related with light. Through the eyes is how we see the light. So in this case, in the world of becoming, there is only a single eye, which is called the letter Yad, Keter. And from there emerges the light. That become three, which is the letter Aleph. We will say three eyes in this case. Two in each side of the face and one related with the pineal gland. That's why uh, God is also represented in the uh, Hindu pantheon with uh, three eyes. The one in the center is related with the pineal gland and pituitary gland, which is the clairvoyant eye, the intuitive eye of Shiva. 
which is also drawn in many pictures in every god of the Hindu pantheon. So, from the world of becoming emanates first by the Holy One who calls Adam, in this case Adam is Chesed, the protagonist, the spirit, to perceive is, perceive it, so that he, he said, was able to view the archetypical world at a glance. This is written in the Zohar. I mean that when in meditation we penetrate into the world of Chesed, our own spirit, this is how we see that light of the Logos, the light of becoming. An example of that is, for instance, uh, uh, in the book of Revelation, that it starts, I was in the day of the Lord, in the Spirit, and I saw, etc., 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 all of that that is written in the book of Revelation. That means that the true prophet sees with his spirit all the archetypical world related with what is becoming in us and what is becoming in the earth as well. So you see how beautiful are these verses of the Zohar in relation, of course, with uh, what we are explaining here alchemically and Kabbalistically. So remember, Brahma, Abraham, the innermost, abides in each one of us. Is our own particular spirit. The only one that can make the man into the likeness of the Logos, which is Keter, the father of all the lights. Because the first thing that emerges in the universe from the world of the absolute is the light. Light is the beginning of everything. Ains of or a light. That light becomes different type of matters in the universe. And this is how we see that in the graphics that we find uh, in the PDF file, you find the next one where we find the infinite, <coughs> different galaxies gathering, making what we call the firmament. Because also Atiluth is related with the firmament, which is also the infinite. And uh, in other words, Atiluth is the first manifestation of that light, physically speaking. But a light that comes from the seventh dimension and that appears in the third, as you see there, this uh, photograph of the world of the infinite, related, of course, with our own particular infinite. When we find millions of galaxies, every single galaxy contains millions of suns or solar systems. And every sun in itself is a physical vehicle of that light. So no matter where we find that light in the universe, it's always the light of becoming. In any place, we will say in any infinite as well. Because in Gnosticism, we have the theory of the many infinites. We are addressing here only the infinite of Einstein related with the world of Atsiluth. That light condenses, of course, below into the world of Bria, forming what we call the galaxy, the Milky Way, or any galaxy within that infinite. So when we talk about the world of Bria, we always uh, address the chest of that cosmic man, which is called Arikampin in Zohar. 
gigantic being. That is, of course, is a way in which the Zohar describes the manifestation of that light. Because the word of Azilut relates to the head of that being. And the chest to the galaxy, which is represented, as the Master explains, by the zodiac, the 12 zodiacal signs, which relates to the 12 tribes of Israel. You will see in many pictures that uh, where you find the Arikam Ping like that. So Israel is always associated with three Sephiroth. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, Hesed, Geburah, and Tifereth is associated with the chest of Arikampin, where we find the zodiac, the 12 zodiacal signs, the 12 tribes of Israel, which is the light. Because Israel refers to that light, which is in the galaxy, in the stars. Master Samael on Veor explains that our own essence, our own consciousness, comes from the stars, from the galaxy, with the note La. And of course, that note vibrates in our own spirit, our own divine soul. It vibrates there, and from there descends into the physical world, passing through the solar system, which is called the world of Yetzirah. But behold here the galaxy. So each one of us has his own particular star in the galaxy. That star is your own spirit. Some spirits have developed already the archetypes. But many of them do not have those archetypes developed. Because those archetypes could be developed only if they descend into Malkut, in order to know alchemy. It develops only if the Divine Mother, Deborah, Adonia, Isoberta, Isis, Mary, or whatever name you want to give it to the Divine Mother, says, let us now make Adam into a likeness, into our image. She's the one. When that is asked, then the Logos from Asilut sends from the world of Bria, our own spirit, and says, help the Divine Mother to make Adam into a likeness. Because you have in your bosom the archetypes of Azilut that are named Israel. And this is how the spirit descends and floating upon the waters. Remember that the waters symbolize the feminine aspect. So the Divine Mother are the waters that we have. And the Holy Spirit is hovering above those waters and making Adam inside of us according to the image what that is deposited in him. So that's what we see why Arikam Pin has Bria in his chest. But below... The world of Bria, we have the world of Yetzirah, which means the world of formation. What is called the world of formation? Because here is what we have to form in Yetzirah. Those vehicles that we call Psyche in uh, Greek. That is called anima in Latin, soul in English. In other words, we have only an embryo of soul that in Buddhism is called the Buddha Datu. 
the consciousness that we received a beautiful lecture before related with that part of us that is perceiving the light. Right now you are perceiving the light through your eyes, but the one that is perceiving it is your consciousness. But uh, are we capable of perceiving the light of Yetzirah, of Bria and Atziluth, the heavens? Physically, yes, but not internally. And this is what we have to do. We have to build Adam inside of us in order to perceive all the light of God. Because God, Kater, is not only abiding in this physical world, but in all dimensions, in all worlds, because He is light. He is Ehe Asher Ehe and here in the world of Yetzirah is where we find that uh, world that relates to the solar system. In the solar system, we have the solar light and all the planets. Uh, in synthesis, we will say that when we talk about the solar system, we talk about seven planets, esoterically, alchemically. We have seven days, and you know that uh, in Judaism they always worship today, which is the seventh day, called Shabbat, related, of course, with Saturn, because the seven days are related to the seven planets, esoterically speaking, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, and those address the world of Yetzirah which is the world of formation. So in order for form, in order to form the man into the likeness of God, we have to make that man seven, acceptable. The true man, psychological man, has seven bodies. The physical body is just the last manifestation. But obviously the internal bodies, we have, have to be created because the only body that uh, the demiurgos or the demiurge gave us as a gift is a physical body. And we have to steal the energy from the physical body in order to make Adam. Because this physical body belongs to nature, the demiurge. Was born, grow up, is going to get old, and is going to die. If we don't take advantage of the body, the demiurgos is going to take it. Because it's just a vehicle, a machine, in order to transform energy. So, we are machines, physically speaking, but we have to steal the energy from the demiurge. And we have to be wise, because the forces of the demiurge will act against us. But he is also the one that provides us with that essence. So, we are between two paths here. We follow the demiurge, or means the mechanicity of nature, or we follow our own being. This is the choice. But in both sides, the solar energy, the energy of Eheye, is working. So, <coughs> this is the world of Yetzirah, that as you see, every solar system is in itself a Yetzirah. And every world of Kabbalah relates to the, se to the Sephiroth in different dimensions. Now, the last world of Kabbalah is called Asya, which I repeat is uh, also related with action and matter, physical matter. But this Asya is not only physical matter. It could be also a type of matter which is very subtle. Master Samael on the Or in one of his lectures stated, you have to understand that Keter, which is the first manifestation of that light, which is a state of pure becoming, is light. 
but related. If you want to relate Keter, the father of all the lights, to the absolute, Keter is Malkut in relation. So Keter becomes a Malkut, word of action, for the absolute. So when we talk about Asiya, which means to make, to do, action, Asa is also. In our case, we address our physicality. This is the world of action, the world of matter. Because there are other type of matters which are above this physicality, but which are very subtle. And uh, in order to perceive them, we have to master the quanta, which are those packages of energy that travels in the space at the speed of light and other type of speeds in other dimensions. Uh, he who is capable of perceiving the light of the quantas in all dimensions is the one that is really directly in contact with Eheye, the Holy Spirit, a share, Eheye. Before continuing to this, let us go up into the first graphic in order to explain Eheye, a share, Eheye. As you see, it's saying, Keter, the solar force that emerges from the absolute, is the one that becomes in the world of Asiluth, in the world of Bria, in the world of Asia, the world of Yetzirah, in the same light, but in different dimensions. That's why we place the graphic of this archetype from the Hindu pantheon, which is Vishnu. Vishnu is the one who works everywhere. That's the meaning of his name. Vishnu, the one who works everywhere. Everywhere where? In all the universe. And the universe, of course, is divided in different uh, dimensions or levels. And Vishnu is called the Logos in Gnosticism. The second aspect in Christianity is called the Sun. So he is one with the Father. As Jesus said, I am the Father are one, referring to Christ, which is Vishnu, which is Avalokiteshvara. He had many names in different pantheons. Quetzalcoatl. This is the name of that archetype in the Aztec pantheon. So, if you see how it, the word Eheye, Asher Eheye, is written in Hebrew, you will notice that the word Asher in the middle relates or means in Hebrew, who. There are many ways to say who in Hebrew, but Asher means who. And of course, if you modify the position of the letters, if you put the R in the beginning of the word, you make the word rush, which means head. And then you see very clear that the Holy Spirit is the head of creation. Through the Holy Spirit is how the first triangle, because Eheye is the Father, Asher is the Holy Spirit, and Eheye again is the Son. So when you say Eheye, Asher, Eheye, you, you are saying the Father, through the Holy Spirit, is the Son. And it is easy to see, because without the sexual force of the Holy Spirit, the Father cannot be the Son. Eheye, Asher, is who? The Holy Spirit. The head. So through the head, which in this case is formed by Keter, Chokma, Bina, of Arikamping, the Holy Spirit works through 
the Ruach Elohim that hovers above the waters of the Divine Mother. And how do you call that Holy Spirit in the Bible? His name, Jehovah Elohim. yod he vav he elohim which is the Holy Spirit, Bina. That's why the Bible in Genesis states that all of creation was made by Jehovah Elohim or Jehovah God or as many Bibles state, the Lord God. They, instead of saying Jehovah, they put Lord and God is Elohim. So Jehovah Elohim, the Holy Spirit, is Asher. And that's why Keter works through the sexual force of the Holy Spirit <coughs> in order for it to work upon the waters, above the waters, through the Ruach Elohim, who is our own particular spirit, our own inner most. Now, in the world of Yetzirah, which is the world of formation, we find three sephiroth. Netzach, Hod, and Yesod. We are going to address now Yesod, because Yesod is related to the second day of Genesis. But this Yesod is the one that works together with Jacob, which is Israel, which is above the waters, because Jacob, Israel, is the son of Abraham. In other words, all of those archetypes from the world of Atziluth in the world of Bria are called Jacob, Israel, same thing. Because remember that Jacob was named Israel because these are the psychological archetypes that are under control of Hesed, the spirit that we have within. So when you read that the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of God, is hovering above the waters, is saying that Israel, within the womb of the spirit is hovering above the waters in order to work in the making of Adam in Yesod. So, going down with the graphics, let us go into what the Bible states in this, uh, the following graphic after uh, the world of Asia. And is written, and Elohim said, Let ye he be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. As you see here, there are two waters associated. Because if we follow the sequence of the that uh, second day it says uh, that the waters above will be f separated from the waters below. So the waters above, as we always uh, explain in many lectures, are called Shamayim, the waters of heaven. And the waters below are called Mayim which are the waters of the earth. But when we talk about the waters above and below, we always associate these waters with Akasha, is how we say it in Sanskrit, which is not that water that we find in the physical world. Akasha is that blue substance that is in the space within which all the planets are floating. Akasha is the Divine Mother, that water. In us, Akasha relates to the 
vital body, which is the superior aspect of the physical body. That's why in the vital body, Matthew Samael explains, we have the tatuas, or vibrations of that water that give life to our physicality. So the akasha itself that relates to the whole physicality, I mean the vital body, the superior aspect of our physicality, is yesod in the tree of life. That's why you find yesod above Malkut. And in that yesod is where the powers of the waters of the Divine Mother abide. When we see that archetype called Arikamping behind the tree of life, we find that Yesod relates to our sexual organs. So associate always Yesod with the sexual organs and with the waters of our own vitality. That means that the vitality of our physicality depends of our sexual behavior. Remember that Yasad relates to the tree of good and evil. And when Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit of the tree of good and evil, they knew death and enter into sin. So Yesod really is a wonderful sephira related with sexuality, related to the waters above us, related with what Paul of Tarsus called Suhikon. To Soma Suhikon or To Soma Saikikon, as we say sometimes. Because in English, Suhikon is Psyche, the Psyche. Or that vital force above the physical, physical body, who is an intelligent force. That's why it's called, by Paul of Tarsus, Suhikon. Doesn't mean that it's just a vital force there in the, in the vital body without any intelligent direction. It's intelligent. Psyche. Ecological, psyche, above. This is in the waters. So, the waters are, of course, related with sexuality. That's why it says that the third primordial is the Holy Spirit related with the waters in the physical body. But if you see the tree of life, there is the right and the left column, and in the center, is the middle column, which relates to our spinal column. But the right relates to the superior waters of Hesed, because in the right is Hesed, the spirit that floats above the waters. And in the left are the black waters that descends to Malkut, which animals utilize in order to fornicate. The left side of the tree of life goes into Malkut and beyond to Klippoth, relates to the circle of mechanicity of birth and death, the will of Zamzara, to which we are submitted. If we behave like animals, we are submitted to the left of that tree of life, and eventually we will go and sink into Klippoth if we continue fornicating with those waters, losing them. But if we take advantage of what Genesis states and advises, and we take the light from that waters, and then you understand why the light emerges from the darkness. Because those the, uh, waters in the left are polluted waters, waters of fornication that everybody utilizes 
to multiply, to have children, like animals, because we are intellectual animals. But here in this path, it's teaching us that we have to divide the waters from the waters in order to make a firmament. Rakia. It's called a firmament. In the mist, in other words, in the very middle of the tree of life, we are going to make a firmament. That firmament is always related with the ten sephirah. But it's going to be our own particular individual firmament. Because we are creating Adam into the likeness of God. And we already saw what God is. It's the universe. It's light. Crystallized in different matters, different planets, different suns. Absolute, Priya, Yetzirah, Asia. Any planet in the universe is an Asia. But now we are going to make a universe that will reflect that in us. Remember that this is stated. The man is the microcosmos of the macrocosmos. So we are building that microcosmos little by little. Because that let us make Adam into our own likeness, into our own image. It's not just of one day. It takes it's a long process of alchemy. Here you find in this uh, graphic the tree of life, of course. And you find a woman under the water. That woman, of course, is showing uh, her nose, her chin. And the body is appearing little by little. <coughs> it's the Divine Mother who is making with Tifereth. You see in the right side the, the hand of that female holding Tifereth. And the left hand is holding Yesod. Meaning it's holding the waters, holding the archetypes, in order to make in the world of Yesod, in our own particular vital body, that firmament that will divide those waters from the waters. And that is a mystery of alchemy. Transmutation. This is the only way to do it. Above you find, of course, Drops, two drops, that are falling into Tifereth. The two forces of mother and father dropping into Tifereth, which is the sun in this way. And the waves, of course, causing by the drops falling into Tifereth, into the water. That means that the whole firmament is being done by Keter. Because let Yehi be a firmament, is written. Of course, the translation is, let there be a firmament. But Yehi is Ehe the word of pure becoming. Because that light is always becoming into us and to the universe and to any single particle of the universe, whether it's a sun, whether it's a planet, whether it's a moon, whether it is us or any human being in this planet or any planet, this war of becoming is always going into our own monad. And in this case, Tifereth, which we explain this is the mystery of 13, the mystery of 4. And from there emerges, thanks to Yesod, because Yesad is that water inside of us. It's our vital body, our own vitality that we are taking advantage of. And we are in that moment, in the midst of the waters, also means in the sexual act. Because a man when is sexually united with a woman, there is two waters there. The dark waters, the woman. The light waters, the men. I will explain why. Because the dark waters are in the womb, in darkness. And the sexual forces of the men are very obvious, always showing. 
The man is active, the woman is passive. So between those two waters is how the firmament is arising. But behold, it is not stated, let us make a firmament. It says, let there be a firmament. Means that that firmament already exists. Where? That firmament exists in the monad. That firmament is the 13 elements of mercy of the world of Atiluth that form Israel in the womb of Abraham, our own particular innermost. So when those are taken by the spirit that floats above the waters, that firmament is appearing in Yesod. It's not that easy to make. They are already made. Because that is the pure element. The man into the image of God is in Hesed, is in Abraham. And when you follow the alchemical process, then Elohim, which is Keter, is placing through Abraham Israel. In the midst of the waters. Which are the men and the woman. Who practice chastity. Sexual alchemy. But also that mist of the waters. Symbolize the tatwas. That we have within. The tatwa of the fire. The tatwa of the water. The tatwa of the earth. And the tatwa of the air. Those four tatwas relate to what we call the ether of chemistry or chemical, the chemical ether. Because we know that in the vital body we have four ethers. Chemical, vital, reflective, and luminous. But the chemical ether relates to the four tatwas of, that form the physical world. Of the four elements. Air, fire, earth, and water. There are other elements that is called the tatwa of akasha. That relates to the ether of life that relates to our sexual organs. So the ether of life, which is akasha ether, or vibration of that water, is in our sexual organs, which is made of what we eat. Remember that we talk about the panka tatua, the five tatuas related to what we eat already in other lectures. But let me synthesize. Fish, meat, cereals, and grape juice relates to the four tatwas. And when we consume that, the body transform and transform it into akasha tatwa in our sexual organs, which is semen. So the vital force or the ether of life is in our sexual organs. And the rest of ethers are the chemistry ether that uh, relate to the metabolism, metabolism of the physicality of our physical body. But we have other two ethers above, the reflective and the luminous, that will be related with the firmament that we are talking about. Where we are going to place the firmament that we are talking about? In those type of ethers. But we have to separate. That's why it is written. And let us separate the waters from the waters. And that, of course, is a process of alchemy. Before going into that, behold here the firmament that is related with the verses of Deuteronomy 33, chapter, verse 28, where it is written. Remember, when we talk about Israel, we're talking about the archetypes. Put in your mind that. And Israel shall be near in Yesod safely alone. 
and those superior ethers called reflective, which relates to willpower, and luminous, which relates to imagination. The orb of Jacob. In the Bible, you find the eye of Jacob. But remember that ajin means orb or eye. And if you said eye, it refers not to a physical eye, but to the spot that we are talking, the firmament here, which relates to the Shoshana, which means it's in the middle. All the archetypes that we are talking about related to the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet with the five ones in the middle. Shall be upon the earth, Malkut. In other words, that firmament of the second day should be above us. Hmm? This physicality is called the Tosoma Sukhikong, or Psychikong. And after that, it's stated, Grain and wine, also his heavens, Tifereth, shall drop down with dew. That means grain and wine, that relates to the forces of the seed. You remember the seed of Abraham, the seed of the Isaac, the seed of Jacob. Those are the grains that we are talking about here. The wine is a force related to Geburah. And Geburah is the only sephirah that goes down to Malkut. But before going into Malkut, passes to Hod and Yesod. And in Hod we find the dew. The forces of the light that goes, you know the dew. In the morning you find all the flowers, all the plants filled with dew. Right? Coming from the forces of the moon, Yasad. In us as well, our vital force descends. And this is how it says, grain and wine, also his heavens, which is Tifereth, from above, shall drop down with dew. Or through the dew will come down into Malkut. Above. In other words, when we build that firmament in us, we see the difference between the earth and the heavens. We build what Paul of Tarsus called To Soma Psyche Gong. The two superior ethers separate from the inferior ethers, and with them, with the superior ethers, we travel in heaven of Jetsia, or travel in heaven of Bria, or Atziluth, or even in the same absolute. It has the two ethers that give us ecstasy, Samari. That's why we always state, the one that fornicates, that utilizes sexual force like an animal, how is he going to have an ecstasy? We need the reflective ether and the luminous ether, which are related to the superior tadwas of our own vitality, in order to have an ecstasy. Because we can not take the tadwa of the inferior tadwas that we have in the physicality in order to experience an ecstasy. We need the energy. We need some, some fuel to push us up into heaven. And that is the luminous and reflective ether that we have in our own vitality in Yesod. And through that is how we make the firmament that we are talking here that the second day of Genesis explains. In the next graphic, you find an image that explains how that firmament is made. The seven chakras in our own vitality, our own uh, vital body. The second initiation of mayor mysteries. That is the beginning of this, the creation of that firmament. Because that takes, of course, a lot of work in order to make that firmament to shine. And that is, of course, related with the exorcism of water, which is written in Latin. Fiat firmamentum in medio aquarum et separate aquas of aquis, que superius sicutque inferius et que inferius sicutque superius, ar perpetranda miracula rei unius. 
related to the second day of Genesis. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. The things which are above are like unto the things which are below, and things below are like unto things above, for the performance of the miracle of the unity. In other words, that is showing many things. That it, in order to make the miracle of the unity, what is the miracle of the unity? Physically speaking, it's the sexual act. If there is no waters, which is a sexual force, how do you want to perform the unity? There is no sexual potency. The water, from the waters comes life, and you know that, scientifically speaking. So that's the miracle of the unity. <coughs> and also the miracle of the unity in us, with the transmutation. Is how do you make it? When you know how to divide the waters from the waters. In this case, we will say, when you take the energy, the force, from your polluted waters, which are black, dark, and make light and release the waste out of you, which is fornication, which is lust. This is how you divide the waters. Some people like to swim in the polluted waters, which are the fornicators. But if we are fornicators, we got to stop being fornicators, in fornicators, or fornicators, I mean, in order to swim in the superior waters. And for that, you have to renounce the animal behavior. There's no way that an animal is going to swim in the waters of heaven. Only Israel swims there. So then after that it says, Soleius pateres, luna mater, adventus, ian eh, gestavit en utero suo, ascendir a terra, a cello et rusus, a cello interram decendit. Which means, the son is its father. Talking about that firmament. Who is the son? The archetypes of Israel in Tifereth, which are being place there in that firmament from above, from Keter. So that is the father. The moon is mother, the water. Here, we were, are separating the water from the waters. We are taking the best of our sexual waters. It is the moon of his mother. The wind, the Ruach Elohim, Brahma, Abraham, have gestated it in its womb. Hmm? So our own particular animals carries those archetypes in his womb, doing the sexual alchemical work. It ascends from earth to heaven when you transmute the waters, and again it descends from heaven to earth. So this is a process that is always happening every time. It is sent up from heaven, and when you transmute it, you send it back to heaven. That is called the trogo auto egocratic cosmic common. The work of the solar force. If you don't transmute, you don't follow that. <coughs> well, in order to exercise the creature of the water, it says, I exorcise the creature of the water, that you may become unto men a mirror of the living God. In his works. Who is the living God? Shaddai el Hai. The living God is the name Shaddai el Hai in Kabbalah of Yesod. Our sexual energy is Shaddai. When you are in chastity, you are working with Shaddai el Hai or the living God. To be a mirror is to have in your vital body. The reflection of that living God in his works. God works with the light. Through the light, he makes everything. Eheye is the light, the divine light. Let there be a firmament. Let there be light. It's always that part of Keter working. A font of life, a fountain of life. An ablution of sins. You see, you have to practice the ablution. To drop that water in any religion. You have the mystery of the 
ablution of sins. It says that when you are baptized in the Catholic Church, that the sin of fornication is gone out, which is the original sin, when he is baptized and drop water in the head. That's a symbol that you have to perform when you are adult and transmute your sexual waters. That ablution is going to, to heal you. In India, the Brahmins, they say that you have to practice the ablution. There are many types of ablution, but the ordinary one that you know is always going into the Ganges River and submerging themselves like that. And they do different mantras and practices in order to clean their sins. But that's symbol. Some people think that by doing that, they are going to clean themselves of sins. But this is absurd because it's a symbol that they have to perform in the sexual act because only the sexual energy, the fire of the Holy Ghost, can burn the sins of the world. That's the meaning, you know, the ablution of sins. Because the mystery of, of Jesad. And in Judaism, you have what we call the mikveh. Every Saturday, today, they go into the mikveh, which is a sacred bath, and they submerge themselves and pray. Kuma Adonai. Arise. Adonai is the God of the earth. How is Adonai to rise if we don't transmute the sexual force? It's impossible. So that's, that's the mystery of the exorcism of water. Exorcism te creatura aqua. Utsis mihi speculum dei vivi in opribus eius in fom vite in ablosu peccatorum. Ablosu peccatorum, which means the ablution of sins. Amen. When you are doing that, you are practicing sexual magic. Then, of course, when a priest, a magician, wants to exercise the water in a, any given temple, and he pronounced in Latin these words, then the creatures of the waters that abide in the lakes, in the river, will obey him, will come, no matter how far is from the ocean, from the lake, from the river, in order to clean the atmosphere of what the priest is commanding to do. But because he also is doing that within himself. But if the priest is not doing that in himself, in his vital body he doesn't have Israel as a firmament, how is he going to control the, the creatures of the water? You see how beautiful is this second day of Genesis? And of course... In the next graphic, we see the Tosoma Psychikon, or Suhikon, as you said in, in, in Greek. <coughs> and Elohim made the firmament, Tosoma Psychikon. When you said El and Elohim made the firmament, he's referring to the Divine Mother, Aima Elohim, down here. Because when you are transmuting your sexual energy, then you are cooperating with the logos, in order to make the Tosoma Psychicon, which means the vehicle in the vital body that will contain the archetypes. That archetype, or those archetypes, I repeat, are named in conjunction, in group, Israel. So in other words, Israel is placed in your psyche, in your vitality. And remember that the vital body is related with the process of sleeping. When you go to sleep and you lie down and you start snoring, then your vital body starts charging the physical body with the different ethers or tatuas from the fourth dimension. And if you have your firmament made within you with the two superior ethers, then you will abandon your body with those two superior ethers and enter into heaven. Because the Tosoma Saiki Kong is precisely that. This is what in Buddhism is called Bodhicitta, the consciousness. But behold, here, 
how in Buddhism, bodhicitta is related with semen as well. It's not a, co a coincidence. It is because it's the same thing, it's just odd. And in there is where it's called the psyche. When you annihilate your ego, all the psyche that you are gathering in the annihilation of the ego is gathering there in the tosoma psychicon, in that superior part of, the, of your body. Separated. Let us separate that part of the waters from the inferior waters. You don't want to mix that superior thing with the inferior waters where Pharaoh exists. We utilize uh, the forces of the water just for pleasure. And divide the waters which were under the firmament from the water which were above the firmament and it was so. In other words, when the initiate build the Tosoma Psyche Kong inside, those, that body, Tosoma Psyche Kong, the Bodhicitta, relates the, to the reflective ether and luminous ether, which means willpower and imagination. Remember that in other lectures we told you that Moses is willpower and he begins his development precisely in Yesod as a baby. And this is the Tosoma Psyche Kong. When Moses reaches Tifereth, then he is an adult ready to go to the Mount Sinai. But that's just the beginning of the birth of Moses in this way which relates, of course, to the work of alchemy. So then, below, we find that quotation of the Master Samael on Veo that we are going to read in order to leave it there. It is written that the vital body or the base of the organic life in each one of us has four ethers. The chemical ether and the ether of life are related with the chemical processes and sexual reproduction. You already explained. The chemical ether is a specific foundation of the chemical organic phenomena. The ether of life is a foundation of the rep reproductive and transformative sexual processes of the race. The two superior ethers, luminous and reflective, have more elevated functions. The luminous ether is related with the caloric, luminous, perceptive, etc. phenomena. The reflective ether serves as a medium of expression for willpower and imagination. The superior ethers are disjoint in order to form the soma psychicon by, by means of initiation. It is necessary to know that the soma psychicon is the ethereal body of the heavenly man. We can travel through the infinite with the heavenly, ethereal, crystified, and stigmatized body. The heavenly virtues crystallize in the essence. The essence charged with the virtues, powers, laws, etc. is dressed with the Tosoma Psychicon. This is how you have to understand that when you are comprehending your ego, you are placing the free essence into the Tosoma Psychicon, into the superior part into that firmament, into that particular individual heaven that you have in your vital body. In the fifth round, the earth will be blue, ethereal, transparent, and ineffable. The ethereal, crucified human, the man Christ, can consciously and perfectly enter and depart from the physical body at will. Truth and virtue have totally united in the ethereal man. The ethereal man is a perfect bodhicitta, tosoma psyche gong, samael on the or. So, in the last graphic, this is how you explained Jacob. Everybody knows about the Jacob's ladder, or oh, when Jacob uh, slips and put his head on the rock of the assault. And he sees a ladder that goes up and down. It says, and Elohim called the firmament heaven. When you said, and Elohim called that firmament heaven, that means the work that we are doing. 
when you annihilate an ego and release the essence, it goes into the firmament, your own particular firmament. doesn't remain there with your ego. It's free. Separated from the inferior waters. That's why sometimes some Gnostic says, I am working in my ego, but I don't see the results. In other words, an ego that wants to see results, don't see the results of the... He wants to utilize the, that, that, that free consciousness for his own egotistical purposes. God is not a stupid. Separate those psychological forces and put it up and you continue doing your work. If you want to enjoy that, die completely. And then you will enjoy that free, that free consciousness. Imagine God giving Israel. Israel was already in slavery here. It is written symbolically on the, 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 the commands of the Pharaoh. If that Israel is liberated and going back into Egypt again, what is that? It's a play of that. Slavery? Free. Slavery? Free. No. We have to go up, be free from slavery, to go in the Exodus. And yet he, is what is written, the evening, and yet he, the morning, the second day. Because yet he above is the forces of the father, and yet he below are the forces of the mother. Together, they make another day, which is the second day. <coughs> the psyche con. Do you have questions? Can you explain a little bit more um, about the relationship between bodhicitta and the ethereal man? Are you implying that uh, anyone who uh, creates the, the ferment or um, the, the tosoma of the psyche plan uh, develops bodhicitta? Yeah. yeah. The, the question is, does anybody that builds the Tosama Saki Kong develop the Bodhicitta? Yeah. But of course, we are explaining here the making of the body. And that uh, is just the beginning. Because the process implies a lot of work. After that, you have to enter into the third day and etc. that we are going to enter in another lecture. But the psychological work that we call psychological death has to be performed. And every single ego that we annihilate here in this physical world is placed in that firmament and gathered in that firmament. Whether we have the body or not, the consciousness is gathered that in that firmament. Because this is how God separates the waters from the waters. Because in this case, the words or the forces of Yesod, the waters of Yesod, are working in two purposes, for Malkut and Yesod. You see the duality there? And are not purified yet. That's why if you read the second day of Genesis, it is not written, and God saw that it was good. It is not written there. All the day says that, but except the second. Because even though it is good, in order for God to see that it was good is another thing. It's good for us. But for God said, no, it is not enough. We have your Saki Kong there already made, but we have a lot of work to do, psychological work, in order to make that firmament to shine completely. To develop that bodhicitta a hundred percent. It's just the beginning of the building of the bodhicitta. Remember that when you build a bodhicitta, it's not like uh, uh, like Aladdin, the lamp of Aladdin. Whew, it's there. No, it's, it's a process. It's so much psyche come. That's why Paul of Tarsus says, first is the psyche and then the spirit. This is the first step that Paul of Tarsus talked. Sometimes that psyche kong is uh, translated as animal, sometimes as uh, uh, the, how do you call, the terrestrial. Hmm? But the psyche is first. First is how you, you, you make the atom. First, the atom is psychological, psyche, soul. It's how you build. 
And we are going to continue in other lectures talking about the other aspect of this Adam. But the last aspect is the spiritual Adam, which is very high. We are just beginning. We are in the very bottom, making that Adam into our image. Your question? Yeah. So is there a connection between you know, the moon and Thoth? You said that the, you said that in the Egyptian mythology, the moon. Thoth. Yeah, Thoth. Yeah, Thoth. Yeah, Thoth. The, the god Ibis, Ibis, Thoth, right? It relates to uh, writing. And in the Book of Revelation is stated, write to the seven churches, which are in Asia. How is related with it? Well, it's pretty easy to see when you know alchemy. Uh, Hermes Trimegistus is the god Ibis of Tat, Mercury. And Mercury, of course, is divided also, as you see here, the waters of different ethers. Mercury is divided into uh, the Ra Mercury, or the great right work, which is called Brute Mercury, is the semen in itself, as we find it in the sexual glands. That's a brute mercury. And then we find the soul of the mercury, which is the outcome of transmutation. It's the energy that rises through Ida and Pingala. And then we find the mercury fecundated by sulfur, which is the kundalini that rises in the spinal medulla, that will actually, eventually, create the tosoma psyche kong in us. And uh, <coughs> there is another type of, of mercury that is called uh, filthy mercury, a sulfur, sulfuric mercury, related with uh, the ego, right? Because the ego is also a crystallization of mercury that is called sometimes, I guess, dried mercury. We have to erase that, to separate those mercuries. It's a work of alchemy. To write is, of course, to do it, you know? To write that, this write to the church of Ephesus or write to the church of Smyrna is actually to send the energy of Yesod to any of those particular chakras or churches that the book of Revelations talk about and how to develop. Because every church states uh, and shows the virtues that we need in order to develop the different chakras of the Tosoma Saikikong. Mm -hmm. To write, of course, is that. To do, to communicate, in other words. Because when you write a letter, you write a letter for, to somebody else, right? Unless you are writing a letter for yourself. You put it in the mail and you receive it and you will be, how do you call that? Nuts, right? But if you're writing a letter to God, write to those archetypes which are in the seven churches means go send the energy to God because you are writing to him right and then you are developing that so this is how thought Hermes Ibis in in Egypt relates of course to the second day of Genesis and that's why uh, when we name uh, the exorcism of water, we relate that also to, to the god Ibis, Ibis of Thoth. The verbs separate, unite, and reconcile confuse me. Please explain, preferably with examples, these three activities in the context of reflecting the law. Separate, unite, and reconcile. Separate, unite, and Reconcile, to explain those words, separate. Well, the word separate the waters from the waters. That implies, of course, not only an alchemical work, but a psychological work. And uh, to unite is to perform the religare of those forces through initiation. Because they're also working with the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. 
Remember that when we talk about religion, we talk about the human being. As uh, we were commenting the other day, there is no religion among the animals or among plants or among minerals because they don't need it. We need it. We need to, to reunite again our soul with a superior being, our own God. And that is to unite Israel with God in the promised land. The promised land is the fourth dimension. When you talk about the promised land, it has nothing to do with this physical world. It's the fourth dimension, which is Yesod. We are related to our sexuality. To enter there, you have to be pure in chastity. And this is how you, little by little, are uniting what you are liberating. You see? You only can unite the particles of Israel which are trapped in Egypt, in Mizraim, by liberating it with willpower. That willpower is Moses. That you have to exercise when you are transmuting your sexual energy. You are liberating those forces, but at the same time, you have defects, vices, errors, that you have to annihilate because within each of one of those defects is Israel trapped in slavery. So when you kill <coughs> the Egyptian, as Moses did, meaning when you kill that ego within you, that is free. It goes into the Tosoma Sakikon to make the religion, the religare, the relink. That is to unite, it to reconcile. Well, uh, that word means to reconcile yourself with God. You have to pay karma. Isn't it? How do you understand the word reconcile? What is to reconcile? It means that when you are, I, I swear how I understand the word, when you are uh, uh, not concile with God, it's because you have some sins, some, some errors, some karma, right? That, that means. It means that in order to perform that, you have to pay first what you owe. It's not because you are doing sexual alchemy or because you are meditating. You all have to work with the third factor of the evolution of the consciousness, which means to give charity. Because chesed is charity. Compassion. Remember the 13 attributes of compassion. You have to exercise that. You know? You don't exercise that by killing your neighbor. Right? But by loving your neighbor. Because the first commandment of the law of God is to love thy keter, your eheye, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your sex. And the eheye, the Elohim of your neighbor as your own. But if you are killing the neighbor, that means that you are killing your God too. They say you have to work, you have to understand the meaning of that. To reconcile with God is to pay what you owe. And we did many evil things in the past. So we had to go to do a lot of tons of compassion, of love. In order to perform that. Another question. In the past you said that you have a solar astral body. And that the solar astral body is the vehicle of superior emotion. Can you describe these superior emotions? Well, how do you uh, describe the superior emotions? <coughs> we should leave this uh, answer for the next lecture. Because we are going to enter into Hod. Hod is in relation with... Uh, this, the, the body of emotion, which is called astral body. And uh, when you place uh, the three sephiroth, Netzach, Hod, and Yesod, in the three brains, Netzach got into the mind, and Hod into the heart. And this is how you see how the dew of Hod relates to Tifereth, which is the sun, which is Israel, re related with emotions. 
obviously we have to learn uh, how to crystallize the light of the Father in Hod. And for that, we must learn not to lie. The one who lies is disconnected from Hod, from the archetypes of the light or archetypes of uh, Keter. Because the light only shines when there is the truth. And when we are victims of negative emotions, we lie to ourselves and to the neighbor. So we are disconnected. So we should learn how to, not to be victims of negative emotions in order to crystallize the words of Hod. Because from Hod comes into Yesod, into, from Yesod into Malkut. Can I explain mercy in relation with the Divine Mother? Well, the Divine Mother is mercy itself. The Divine Mother, Kundalini, is mercy. She is the only one that doesn't abandon us. He goes together even to hell. In order to help us to die there in the second death. The Divine Mother is called Kali. And he's the one that develops in the black magicians as a tale of Satan. It's an aspect of the Divine Mother when you are totally lost, condemned to hell, to clip off and only to disintegrate because you don't want to walk in a path of light. And then your Divine Mother says, okay, I'm going to crystallize negatively now because my son doesn't want to follow the path of the Father's light. He wants to be in darkness. So I will be more dark. And she descends with you. And in the eighth circle, he starts, he starts, she starts, I mean, killing you. Because of compassion. Because of mercy. So the Divine Mother, of course, is a, that type of mercy that helps us in hell when we fall. Completely as a completely lost soul. But above, of course, she is, an, uh, she is just an unfoldment of the 13 aspects of mercy of the Father who is in heaven. Yes? Is Shekinah just another name for um, Adonia and Deborah? Shekinah? Yeah, yes. yes, this is Shekinah. We have Shekinah naked. It's without any respect, you know. When we do not respect the sexual energy, the sexual force, we make of the Shekinah a prostitute. It's completely naked, suffers. The Sohar calls that naked Shekinah Lilith. So we are children of Lilith. We have to work now against our own creations and to become children of Shekinah in the light. Deborah. This is how it's written in the, in the Bible. Deborah that teaches Israel how to go on the light. That's a, another name for the Divine Mother. Aima Elohim. Do we have to use the imagination in order for the sexual force to be fully transmuted? Of course. We're talking about here the luminous ether and the reflective ether really with willpower and imagination. Of course, in the very sexual act, we have to be in contact. Remember that the Ruach Elohim, the inner most that hovers above the waters, what type of waters are we talking about here? Obviously, the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, it doesn't, is, is not floating upon the waters of fornication. What is floating there is uh, an ominous bird, a witch, Lilith, 
fornication, lust, generation, right? But when we say that the Holy Spirit floats above uh, the waters, we're talking about the superior waters. And the superior waters are the reflective and luminous ether that relates to the Sotosoma Psychicon. This is how uh, he, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Elohim, controls those waters in order for us to develop that, that chastity. So in the sexual act, we have to be concentrated on our own spirit, our own Father who are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. It's a prayer. The sexual act is the most beautiful way to pray to God. You know, uh, <clears throat> I should mention this. In Judaism, it is a custom. If you go to the Middle East, there in Jerusalem, are all the rabbis praying to the wall. And they are moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? This is what everybody sees. That is the movement of the sexual act. I don't know if they know it, but that is what symbolizes. Meaning that in the very sexual act is how you have to see God and pray. Because that's the movement of the man penetrating the woman. Slowly, controlling. Sometimes stop, continue praying. And then uh, after a while, again, moving. Like in the sexual act. Right? This is a tantric way of praying that is hidden. And that many people repeat mechanically sometimes, but they don't know why. Right? So... And the same way that we are praying to God in that movement, in the same way we have to do it when we are in the sexual act, concentrating in our own particular Elohim with the two superior ethers, and this is how the transmutation is going to be performed. If you do that after, of course, when you go to sleep, like in the last graphic that we see in there, Jacob, that relates to Tifereth, that is putting his head in the stone of Yesod. Hmm? transmuting and then he sees the ladder that goes up to heaven and the angels going up and down that is the secret of that but also when you go to sleep to rest physically the two superior ethers symbolized by the angels go up into heavens and this is how you receive instructions from God while your physicality sleeps the damisel of memories that relates to those two superior ethers bring the memories of your experiences of heaven into your physicality. This is how you go. Whether you have the Tosoma Sakikon already made, because for that you need sexual alchemy. If you don't have it, if you are in chastity as a single, you also are building that in your vitality. And that helps you to have Astral troubles. So it's created in this image, meaning that I will become when the image becomes. And if so, it's ironic because in English, image is not real. Well, if we uh, arrive at the etymology of image in English, which means not real, in, uh, in the Bible, Zalem is. Uh, created as image. And I, my question is, if image is not real, why does the, the word exist? Right? The word exists because it's something. Maybe it's not something that you see physically. But image, as I understand it, is for instance, if I stand in front of a mirror, I see my image in the mirror. Right? So in other case, the image of God is precisely what contains his own reflection. And he is light. In the same way that you go outside and you say, can you bring me a piece of light? He says, no, I'm sorry, I cannot take it. Please, take a portion of light and show it to me. I said, it's there in the space, but I cannot take a, a piece of light. I can show you in a bulb. So light is like that. God is like that. It's light. You cannot uh, 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 take it 
but just as an image, as a reflection in you. In this case, in this case, will be light. And that is the meaning of image. There is no other question. <clears throat> Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,